Now, the VLOOKUP does a little bit of an advanced search in that instead of only giving you the value you're looking for, it brings you the relatable items or rather the items or the attributes that are related to the item you're searching. For instance, I would be interested in finding, let's say, the age of the speaker, Jashon, today. So if I go to Excel and search for the word Jashon, I would only be able to find where that name is, then probably move along or across the row to find their age, which sits in a separate column. But the VLOOKUP function would actually go inside the data, find where my name is, move across the row, and actually identify for me the age of the person that I'm looking for. Have that in mind as I share my screen so we can be able to start this. I'm going to start with the very first. I've given some data sets just to try and show us the various, uh, all, all the insights of what we look up can do. So I'm going to try and just make it a little bit fast as we move all along. So please find yourself in the very first sheet in this Excel file written we look up based on exact match. We look up based on exact match. Are we there? I hope so. So, so uh, I've given some quick uh, preview of some data that we're going to see in the next few minutes. And in this preview of the data, I'm, I'm assuming we are operating a movie store. And in this movie store, I have a list of movies, the movie names. I have the years in which my good movies were produced. I have the rank, you know, uh, I think uh, across the borders, we've seen your know, music and movies uh, being put in the billboards, you know, the best performing movie. Or if, you, if you're on Netflix, for instance, you will see when you log in, they usually show, you know, the, the top 10 movies, let's say, in the country, the, in Kenya, the point, something of that kind. So I have given, you know, some ranks to the movies. Then I'm also, for instance, somebody would be interested in how much sales a movie has been able to attract. So do not look at the figures as small. Let's assume they're in millions of, doll of dollars or something. Then this data set is just a small snippet, but you could actually be having thousands of rows of movies to find. When a client comes in and they're asking, can I get this movie? You might probably want to find out if you have that movie in store, for instance. And maybe the client would be asking, uh, what, year, what year was this movie produced? Or what is the current rank of this movie on the billboard? Something of that kind. Normally, if you use the search button, which I'm currently pointing at, I would only be able to go in and probably search for a movie name. Let me search for a movie called, let's say, uh, Fargo. So I'll go in and type in my Fargo here. Then when I say find all, Excel would be able to locate where those movies are. But the bad thing is when I click on that movie, I have to further move across the row in which the movie has been found to be able to identify the other attributes. What the VLOOKUP now does is it, it is able to help us identify those attributes without the process of moving across the rows. I hope you get the drift. So then how does this VLOOKUP function work? We're going to try and write a quick formula to just be able to understand the VLOOKUP, then we'll proceed into the examples. So I want to click somewhere outside the data. Uh, notice where my cutter is at. I'm clicking somewhere outside my data. Then I'm going to proceed to write my function. Now, you, you, uh, we already mentioned in the previous class that whenever you're writing a function on Excel, you start with an equal sign. So I'm going to pretty quickly press in my equal button. So equals, then we write the word V lookup. Now, somebody must have told you to this moment that V in V lookup actually stands for vertical lookup, which means we have two lookup functions and a third one that was introduced, uh, you know, in the course of the year, uh, in the course of last year. We have V lookup, which stands for vertical lookup. We stand, we have H lookup, stands for horizontal lookup. Then uh, Microsoft introduced recently X lookup. X lookup. It is a function that is currently not available to everyone yet. Uh, it's only users of my, uh, Office 365 that have access to X lookup. It comes in to solve or to address some uh, shortfalls that the V and H lookup had. We are not discussing V lookup today, so let's assume H X lookup for today. So uh, in typing V lookup, I'm just going to lead you to, to read the pop-up you can see there. Is It will help us look for a value in the leftmost column of the table. Then it will return a value in the same row from which that item has been identified. So of course, we already said you don't need necessarily need to type the full name VLOOKUP. You can always press on the pop-up down here 
and automatically the name will be uh, completed, then we will be having an opening bracket. Now, the VLOOKUP has four items in its syntax. The syntax being the number of inputs the VLOOKUP function would need you to put in for it to be able to evaluate and get you a solution, depending on what you're looking for. So the VLOOKUP syntax has four simple questions. Number one, what are you looking for? Lookup value. Number two, table array. Where do you want VLOOKUP to go searching for this lookup value identifying? Question three, should I find this lookup value in the same table? Where do you want me or which column number? Remember the VLOOKUP will bring you an attribute in the same row of in which the attribute has been found. So for instance, if I'm interested in this movie Fargo, then basically they are asking, are you interested in the year or the rank or the sales of the said movie? So we will answer that by indicating the column index number. Then the range lookup is uh, you decide whether you want the search to be autom to be approximate or to be exact. So we're going to proceed to and really try to put in some quick sentence here. So we'll say equals the lookup. The lookup value, the lookup value, I want you to type in the word um, Fago. I want you to type in the word Fago in lookup value. But because the word Fago is not uh, is a constant figure. It's not a cell reference. You know, a cell reference would be something like A5, B2, C3. Those are cell references. And it is not a number. If you attended the last class, you will know that you need to put this word Fago in double quotes because it is a constant which Excel can, does not understand. So we need to wrap the word Fago in double quotes. Uh, the double quotes being, you know, the, the marks we use uh, in speeches. When you want to say, you know, father said, then you put it in, you know, the speech quotes. So uh, double quotes, put the word Fago in double quotes, then put a comma. So if the word Fago is our lookup value. We are interested to find some attribute of Fago. All right. Then Excel is going to ask, the moment you put a comma, you will realize in this pop-up here, the bolded part will move away from lookup value to table array. Basically, they're asking which element uh, in which table do you want to, to be searching for this movie called Fargo? We will come and highlight the whole of this table. Come and highlight the whole of this table. Notice that I have two tables. Don't worry about the second table. I'm going to address it in a second. So just highlight the first table like that, the whole of it. Put a comma. Then Excel is now asking, what is the column index number? Basically, it's, it's asking for whichever movie this is you're interested in. What attribute are you interested in? Are you interested in the year it was manufactured? Are you interested in the rank on the billboards? Are you interested in the sales it has made to date? In this case, I want to assume I am interested in the sales the movie I'm looking for has made. So I will, I'm going to answer this question by telling Excel the column number in which sales exists in the table selected. And it's the column number, not the column name. So you cannot say column F. As I can see, sales is in F. It needs the column number, which means we are going to manually count and see the column number in which sales falls. Now, quick spoiler for you. You do not have to always count from A. The first column is dependent on the table you highlighted. Notice that we highlighted our table starting from C4, basically where this table starts. Then that makes column C the first column. So we will simply count one, two, three, and four. So sales will be four. Uh, I'll kindly ask that we mute if we are not uh, presenting kindly. Thank you so much. So I'm going to write four. I'm going, just going to repeat that again. We do not necessarily have to start counting from A, and that is why I intentionally put this table away from A so that the misconception that many people usually have gets out. You do not have to always start. So it doesn't mean that column A will always be one. You start counting the column number from the table that you highlighted, which means column C in a, is going to be our first column because our table started from here. I hope you can get that clearly. So then sales is going to be in the first, second, third, fourth column. You write four. Many people at this point will write F, which is the column name. Many people will try and highlight column F, which is wrong. Please remember they need the column index 
emphasis on the number. Good. Then put a comma. Then the last question Excel is asking, wait, you see, it's possible I will find this movie you're looking for, or I may not find it. How do you want us to proceed? Do you want us to match it approximately? Which means if I don't find the movie necessarily, I bring you something close to it. Or do you want me to get you only the movie you're interested in? And if I don't get it, I just tell you, sorry, I didn't find this movie. So in this case, we are going to go with the exact match, which is the mostly used form of matching for VLOOKUP. So uh, we're going to click on exact match. And then I'm, I'm, I will also be illustrating an example where we use approximate matching, so don't worry about it. So for now, you double click. The other mistake that people do, let me just delete so that I show something here. So the, the mistake that most people do is at this point of matching, you simply click on exact, then you press enter. When you do that, by default, Excel chooses exact match, which is equivalent, uh, which is equivalent to a zero in, you know, in the binary placements of zero and one. When you just click on it and you do not see the word false come into your formula, Excel will assume the zero for you. So you might get an answer, but you will have problems whenever you're trying to do a lookup that needs approximate matching. So I usually encourage my students that just don't be lazy. Ensure you double click on the word uh, exact match until you see the word false inside here. That is when you've actually chosen. If you do not choose, then you are you are uh, we could uh, make we could compare you to the voter who refuses to vote then goes complaining about the person who was selected so make sure you actually make your choice there at that point i want you to press and enter and you shall see that an answer will pop up which when you closely go and monitor our table you realize that is actually the sales for the movie called fago that is actually the sales for the movie called fago do we have anybody who was able to get that far? Do we have anybody who, who was able to get that far? I'm just trying to see if there is anything here. I can see a few people. Yes, some people were able to achieve that. I can see some people are still having problems with accessing their data sets. I'm going to implore my colleagues to just uh, 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 deal with that uh, as we proceed with the class because our time is also a bit short and we have quite much to cover. So if you are able to get our 66, then that was a good step. That is how easy the lookup is. That is how easy the lookup is. So then let us now try and do something different. I want us to try and populate this table. I know already it has some data. I want you to just click on these three items, press delete, so that we can input them afresh. I want you to select the figures we had on three these three cells and press delete on them so that we can start afresh, so that you can start practicing your VLOOKUP real quick as we proceed. I believe you've done that. So in rank, I want us to create a more like um, a search tool where if we put in a movie name here, Excel is able to give us all the attributes so that instead of us having to look for one item at a time here, we are actually able to find it in the whole of the sheet. Actually, actually, just undo. If you're deleted, just press undo. One second. I've just thought of something. If you are deleted, just press undo. Press undo. We are going to practice this in another sheet that is uh, more relevant for us. Let me. This sheet was just to help us understand what we look up does. And I'm going to just tell you some quick assumptions to work, not work with here. The way we look up works is that the lookup value, the item you are searching, in this case, we were searching for a movie called Fargo, Excel will be searching for it in the first column. Okay? The lookup value, Excel will be searching for it in the first column, which means if we tried writing the same formula we've written here, on this table, then we would not get an answer. Why? Because Excel will be trying to find this movie we call Fargo in this first column. And as you can see in the rank column, we do not have the movie names, All right? Why don't we give it a try? Let's give it a try so that you can see that working. So why don't we just click somewhere close to the 66 that we had as a result of the formula we wrote and quickly try to do another lookup formula, but this time based on this table. So what I want us to do is let's say equals the lookup. Equals the lookup. Are we there? Equals the lookup. 
Um, we are going to write at the word Fargo, but remember we said we are putting that in double quotes, right? Right. The word Fargo putting that in double quotes. The double quotes, remember I said, it's because the word Fargo is a constant and to put it in an Excel file, uh, Excel would, be, would not be able to know what that is. The only other way you can put a constant in a, a function or a formula is when you wrap it in double quotes. But if it were a number or if it were a cell reference like C2, A5, B3, Excel would know what those are. But for constants, you have to put them in double quotes. So equals the lookup, open brackets, in double quotes, the word Fargo, comma. Our table array this time, I want it to be the second table, just to show you that it is always important to make sure the search value is sits in the first column of the table, right? So we're going to select the table just the way we did, put a comma on that, right? Then the column index number, the same thing. We said that you, you count the column number that hosts the item you want. This time we still want the sales. And we remember we said we do not start counting one from A. We start counting one from the column that hosts the first part of the table. So one, two, three, four. Again, sales is column number four. Do not say column F. They don't need the column name. They want the column number. Then put the last comma and say exact match. And then again, the other thing we said is you double click on the word exact match. You do not just click and leave it at such. When you press enter, we are going to be unfortunate not to get an answer. Not because you made an error, but because Excel is trying to find the word Fargo in the first column of this table. All right. That is the only mistake. Excel is going, is trying to find the word Fargo in the first column of the table you selected. So that is very important. And one thing that people often miss in their operations with VLOOKUP. Okay. I think that was enough introduction. We are, we cannot try diving and see what happens. So I know somebody was asking, but Mwalimu, if I wanted to know the sales of this movie called Fargo, I can already see it here. Why should I go into writing a formula when I can already see it? So let us take you to the real world. So a real movie store would look like the sheet two. Go to the sheet, return, real movie store scenario. So now this case, we have this sheet here has 130 movies. The names of the movies, just, uh, just to be honest, the names of the movies exist, all the movies exist. The years uh, are also largely true, but the genre, the main actors, the sales and the rank, those are self-created. So in case uh, the movie the movies want to sue us, please tell them we randomize this data set. But the movies exist. All the other data, I just created them for purposes of this class. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now create the same example we are trying to create by having more like a search word, having more like a search key, such that when I come here and type in a movie name, Excel is able to give me all the details of that movie so that I can be able to communicate to the client. You know, the movie you're searching for, we have it. If we have it, this is the ABC that is able to do. So be very patient with me uh, as we try to adjust this item. We are going to try work, work on the rank until we are ready, then we'll proceed with the other items. So I want us to write a quick formula here in the rank cell that will be able to get us the rank of the movie that has been specified and bring us the result here. Okay, let's proceed then. So of course we start with an equal sign. So say equals, then you say VLOOKUP equals VLOOKUP. Then we say you can always tab, press the tab button or double click on the word VLOOKUP here. Then you shall have the word VLOOKUP, you know, completed for you and an opening bracket put in there for you. Then we shall proceed to, to now tell Excel what we are looking for. But because this time I do not want us to write the name of a movie in double quotes, I want Excel to be giving me the rank of whichever movie exists in this cell. I want Excel to be giving me the rank of whichever movie exists in this cell. I'm going to simply click on the cell called baby, uh, the yellow cell up there. Now this time, we are not going to wrap the word J5 in double quotes. Why? Because J5 is a cell reference. Cell reference simply means it refers to a cell. Whenever I say J5 on Excel, uh, Excel knows good enough to go into a column J and a row number five, which is the yellow cell as it is. So there's no need to wrap it because Excel knows what J5 is, all right? Then that is going to be our lookup value. So at any point, Excel to be checking 
the, uh, the, D, the rank for whichever movie name is in this yellow cell, all right? Put a comma. Then Excel is asking us, wait, now which table array, which table, or where do you want us to be finding this movie in the yellow cell? I'm going to proceed and highlight column A to column F. Notice that I have not done the mistake I talked about. I have made sure because I want to search by movie name, my column A is the movie names, so that that uh, that that the problem we talked about does not occur for my for me. So I've made sure column A is the movie name, so I'm able to select A to five. Now, remember, I've selected at the at the column head, which means I've clicked on A and dragged all the way to F like that. Basically, by doing that, I'm actually avoiding having to go and do cell referencing, which is something that we are not covering today. I know there's the alternative of only selecting from the word movie all the way to the end of the data, but I'm avoiding that route because of matters of cell referencing, which we are not going to handle today. So I want you to highlight so that we have A to F like that. Put a comma. Then the column index number. We are interested in the rank. Can somebody by voice or in the chat box, please tell us the column index number I should write here. What should be my next input if I'm interested in getting rank? What should be my next input if I'm interested in getting rank? I already see an answer. I'm being told it's for five. And where they're getting this five is they simply located the column written rank, then they counted. Now this time we are counting from A because our table selection started at A. So we are counting one, two, three, four, five. Rank is in row, column number five, we'll type five. Remember, it was asking for the column number. So please don't say column E, write the column number. I hope I've repeated that enough. Put a comma, then kindly choose for me exact. Again, we said for exact, do not just click, double click on it. So you can see the word false inside your answer. Then press enter. Press enter and I should see you smiling. Aha, we are not smiling. And why are we not smiling? Because we got a hash NA. It's an error. Now, as opposed to all other functions on Excel, a hash NA from a VLOOKUP function is actually a response, which means we were looking for this movie you were looking, you wanted us to find, which is called Baby, and we were not able to find it. We do not have a movie name in this column that is called Baby. So whenever you meet a hash NA on VLOOKUP, it simply means the item you are searching for has not been found. It does not mean it's broken. It simply means the item you are searching for has not been found. So hash NA from a VLOOKUP function is actually a good response, only telling you that I did find what you're looking for, okay? So kindly proceed and go to the yellow cell and kindly adjust it to boss baby because that is what I intended to write. Adjust it so that it's the word boss baby. Now VLOOKUP is not case sensitive, so do not worry about whichever case you write in, as long as you write it in the right order. So please type the word boss baby and when you press enter, we shall have an answer. Do you have an answer? And in that answer, if you are able to quickly locate boss baby somewhere here, which is in row five, you shall notice that the rank is actually 38. Can you see 38? Can we see 38? Uh, one person, two persons, can we see 38? Yes. Yes, I can, we can see 38. Uh, always they look up. Uh, I'm just reading a comment here. Somebody's asking if the value we look up should always be in the first row. Not the first row, the first column. Your thought is right. The value, the item we are looking for, the attributes should always be on the first column, not on the first row. Now, I want us to, I know you can pro proceed to write this formula yet again, the 38, but I want to give you different angles of looking at it so that you are able to really understand what happens here. So what's going to happen is, if the name in this movie here changes, this rank is going to change to give us the, the right name. So for instance, if I just come here and write, type the word psycho, I can see somewhere there's a movie called psycho. If I just go in there and type psycho, then immediately the rank changes 
to give me the name of the movie Psycho. And as it is for any other movie that you might want to type in the yellow cell. So basically, we are trying to create a yellow, we are trying to create a search tool which is going to help us with managing our movie stock. Notice that I, I gave you this data set having created a quick tool here that tells us how many, uh, how many items in our data meet the criteria we are searching for. So that if I'm searching for the word psycho, I'm told there's only one psycho. If I'm searching for the word uh, baby boss, I think uh, that was also one. If I decide to search for the word be only, then you can see we have 59 items that meet the word that meet uh, the movie name called starting having the word there somewhere. But there is no exact movie that has the word there. Brings me to the first questions I believe somebody will be asking. If you go to the movie name, to the movie shop, you might only be knowing some parts of the name. Or you might not be knowing the full name. For instance, look at the movie on row number 14. Uh, it's called uh, The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. I believe if you went to a movie shop, you might probably just be remembering, you know, I want to, I, there's a movie I saw somewhere called Lord of the Rings. If you come here and search Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings, Excel will say we cannot find this movie. As you can see, it's not applicable here. We have four items that almost match the word Lord of the Rings. But there's no exact movie that has the word Lord of the Rings. So then how can we adjust our formula so that if you search any word that closely matches the movie name, you actually get results. All right. I believe that is something that would be more practical. How can you adjust the formula so that if we search Lord of the Rings, Excel can actually pull out all the movies that closely match the names Lord of the Rings. Then I'm able to choose the one I'm looking for. That would be something interesting, right? Yeah. So what we'll proceed to do is we are going to adjust slightly this formula so that it can be able to also pick the moments where Lord of the Rings exists. But before we go there, let us start with another problem. Instead of the VLOOKUP formula telling me NA when a movie name is not found, would it not be more interesting if the VLOOKUP tells me movie not available? or not found, something that is more human, more responsive than not applicable. You know, no more applicable, if you gave your, if you left your movie store to an intern and they saw more not applicable as a response, they would think, you know, the machine has crashed. So what if you told them, you know, the movie is not found in the system and then they are able to humanly be able to interpret that better. So I want to tell Excel that whenever the result should be not applicable, which I've already told you means the movie has not been found, then Excel should actually tell me something that is more human, a word that we will decide on rather than not applicable. Can we start with that? Yeah. So double click on your not, uh, I, I'm not sure what you have. Uh, in the yellow cell, type the word there only. In the yellow cell, go and type the word there, T-H-E, so that we have a not applicable in rank, which means there's no movie with, that is called there. We go there. Then let us proceed to now adjust that formula. So I want you to double click on, uh, or you can go to the formula bar, or you can double click on the not applicable, uh, which, whichever of those will work for us. So double click on the NA that we have as the result. Double click on the NA. When, it, when you do that, and then we will pop up the formula so we are able to adjust it. So having looked at our formula today, this is one thing that I've actually realized. All right. That, uh, the V lookup actually moves towards the right never towards the left. True. Movie lookup works towards the right, but it looks uh, it looks for items towards the right, but the search value must be the leftmost item. So yes. that we are right. Yes. So if you, if you try to search anything that is, if your search value is towards the left, then you'll never find an answer. You will, with VLOOKUP, you will never find it, but I have a trick that can help you find it though it's not VLOOKUP, it's a, a combination of index and match, something that we are planning for somewhere in the next webinar in the days to come. So keep plugging there sometime later. Index and match can do it, VLOOKUP cannot do it. VLOOKUP, among other limitations, is that the search value must be in the leftmost column of the table and it only searches right. That is a limitation that VLOOKUP has. But index and match cures that. Well, cause, cause so I be on standby for when we'll be handling the index and match. Thank you. 
Thank you, sir. So I'm going to repeat this formula real quick for the, the good people who are not able to follow through. So we are saying that you're going to put your cursor uh, in that cell written rank. Then we shall say equals VL. Then you shall see VLOOKUP pop up. Double click on VLOOKUP. Do we all have it? Then our search value, this time we are not going to write the name of the movie and put it in double quotes because we are trying to create a search key. I'm going to tell Excel that I want you to always be giving me the rank of whichever movie is in the yellow cell. So I'm going to click in the yellow cell. And I said J5, we are not wrapping it because it is a cell reference. Breaking that down, it refers to a cell, which sits on column J, row 5. All right? That is J5. Put a comma. Then Excel is asking which table. Where do you want us to try find this movie? Now, that is where Nation is right. The first column that we are going to highlight must be the column with the movie names because we are, our search criteria is based on a movie name, all right? So we come and select A all the way to F. If you don't know what I'm doing, you click or uh, you put your cursor on A and click, left click and hold, then drag towards F all the way until you've selected F. You release your button, press comma, then we are asked for the column index number. Basically, because we are interested in rank, which column has rank? It is column E. Now we start counting from A because A has data and because A is part of the table we highlighted. So that gives us five. When you count from A to E, that's five. You just manually count. There's no shortcut about that. You click five, put a comma, and then you say exact. And we say for exact, you double click and press enter. If you have the word there in the yellow cell, which is what I asked us to do, if you have the word there in the yellow cell, then you have a not applicable in rank, which we proceeded to explain that the not applicable simply means there is not one movie that has exactly the word there as the name. At that point, are we okay, good people? Aha, uh -huh. I can see on the, on the chat box, somebody has already given us I work around to tell Excel that whenever there is a, whenever we don't get the movie name, instead of giving us not applicable, you tell us, you know, the movie was not found or something. So we're going to, we're going to just quickly adjust that movie and do this. So double click on the not applicable that you have. Double click on the not applicable we have as a response. Put your cursor just after the equal sign. So make sure your cursor is blinking just after the equal sign. See the red toggle for what's, what I'm doing? So just after the equal sign, put your cursor there. Then I want you to write if, if for IF, then you can click on either if error or if NA. This is a conditional, for, this is a conditional function that we are telling, we are using to tell Excel, if you find an error, NA is one of the errors on Excel, if NA is also an error form. So you're telling Excel, if you find an error, you can use either of them. The use is the same. So you can either use if error or if NA. But because I can see on the chat box, uh, the person who indicated that to us, I think it was it Muinde, uh, used if error, I'm going to proceed to use the same so that we match. So double click on if error, double click on if error. Remember we put this formula just after the equal sign. So we have if error, do not interfere with anything on the VLOOKUP formula you wrote. Do not interfere with anything on the VLOOKUP formula you wrote. M go to the farthest end. There's a closing bracket you had after the word false. There's a closing bracket you had after the word false. Put your cursor after that closing bracket. Put a comma there. Move with me. Put a comma there. Then what word do we decide for? What word do you want Excel to tell you if a movie you're searching for is not found? Available. Avail unavailable? Let's go with that. Movie unavailable. Movie unavailable. Movie unavailable movie unavailable. But you will remember something. The word movie unavailable is not a number. It is not a cell reference. It is a constant. What did you say we, what did we say we do with constants on Excel to make them read within functions? We wrap them in double quotes. So the word movie unavailable or, or whichever movie you wrote for that matter, we are going to have it in double quotes. We are going to have it in double quotes like that. So me, I want my Excel to tell me, oops, movie unavailable like that right movie unavailable 
So when I press enter, uh, after closing the brackets, you're going to need to close the bracket. Then when I press enter like that, Excel will be telling me whenever it doesn't find a movie, oops, this movie is unavailable. If I try to come here and say, I just had a person called Nashon on this chat box. Let me see if Nashon is a movie. I'll be told, please, sir, movie unavailable. As well, you can see there's no such word that is close to Nashon. But if you come and type a movie that is known, I remember a movie we were calling Boss Baby. So if I come here and type Boss Baby, Excel will tell me, hooray, we have a movie called Boss Baby. The rank is 38. All right? Were we able to get there? One, two people, were we able to get there? I can see yes. I can, I can see yes. That is good enough. So let us tighten it a little bit. Remember that problem I was indicating that if you go to a movie sh store, you might not be remembering the full name of the movie. You might only be remembering some interesting parts about it. You might just be remembering, you know, the movie was Lord of the Rings, but I can't remember it was Lord of the Rings, which version. I just remember it was Angry Men, but I don't remember if it was 12 or 14. I just remember there was something about Angry Men. What if you want to search with broken parts? You want to do partial search on VLOOKUP. That is very much possible. That is very much possible. So what we're going to progress to do, good people, is this same cell that we are on. So the, the yellow cell kindly change it to Boss Baby. The yellow cell, I just want your screen to look like mine so that we don't lose each other. The yellow cell kindly change it to Boss Baby so that it gives you rank 38, telling you that we only have one word that meets rank that meets the word we are searching for boss baby are we there so to make excel not only search for the word in con in completeness to be able to allow you to search for partial words we are going to need to adjust this the search value a little bit so what i want you to do uh, click on our 38 if you have boss baby in the yellow cell then you have 38 as the answer for rank double click on the word boss baby then i want you to locate the, the word we look up where it is in the formula. Then after the word we look up, you have a bracket, which is color red. Don't worry about the coloring. I want you to identify J5. J5 is basically the cell that has the word boss baby. It's the yellow cell. J5 is the reference to the yellow cell. Locate where J5 is. Did you find it? Good. Now, the person who is coming to seek a movie might be remembering the first word and forgetting the last words, might be remembering the middle words, forgetting a word on the left or on the right, or might be remembering the last word. But I want to cover all these people. I want to cover all these people. I basically want, if you write the first word or the middle word or the last word, either way, as long as it's a keyword that exists, Excel is able to get you an, a response. So what we are going to do is just after the bracket, after we look up, after the bracket, after the word we look up, I want you to open the double quotes, open the double quotes we were using, then put a star, you know, the star we used to multiply on Excel. So double quotes, star, double quotes. So close, basically wrap the star within those two double quotes. Then put the ampersand, ampersand. Anybody who attended our class last, uh, the, a fortnight ago, do you remember what we said an ampersand is? An ampersand is, uh, is uh, I think, the easiest way to type it. I've just typed what an ampersand is uh, in the chat box. But basically, on most laptops, when you press Shift 7, when you press Shift 7, you know, the one we used to say John and Mary, that sign there we, we usually call and is actually called an ampersand. Ampersand. All right. So you have the double quotes. A, a star with inside the double quotes and then the word and then we have j5 and because these are fuzzy words fuzzy to mean the words you cannot remember because they could be on the other side i could be the, the movie name could be lord of the rings i could only be remembering the word lords and i don't remember the word rings i could be remembering the word rings and not lord so I want to protect myself on, on both sides. So on this other side of J5, I'll also do the same thing. So after J5, I'll also put an and, the ampersand, then put another 
as the exclamation mark, which is the double quote, a star, and the double quotes. Uh, sorry, a double quotes, a star, and the double quotes. Yeah, that was right. So basically, if you attended the last class, you're going to realize that what I've done is I am merging, I am trying to join the, the whatever wording is in J5 by allowing it to be flexible for whichever word that I don't remember, or either on the left or on the right side, either on the left or on the right side. So what that is going to allow us to do is if I search for the word, let's say baby, Excel will try to check and see if the word baby exists anywhere, whether it's boss baby or baby mama or anything with the word baby, and we'll be able to get us a response to that in regard. Why don't you press an, a an answer? Press enter, press enter. You shall see that Excel still tells us that it can find boss baby. But this time, if we now change our response, delete the word boss, delete the word boss, we only remain with the word baby, we shall still have a response. Remember the first time when we started, this, this sheet only had the word baby and Excel told us they cannot find that movie called baby. But this time Excel is able to find the word baby. The first time I told you, there's a time I told you to write, to write in the yellow cell the word there. Try putting the word there here and press enter. Excel will be able to get you the rank of the first movie that meets the criteria with the word there. And you can see the search word, there are actually 59 items whose, who, which contains the word there at some point in their wordings. But the first one, which meets the criteria, has a rank of 55. We can just quickly check the first one with the word there is in row eight and the rank is 55. You see? So now, at least in this case, we are able to know the number of movies that meet the criteria of the word I've searched, but it's the, the, the Excel only gives us the very first one that meets that criteria. So much so that if I had, if I wanted to check the other movie, then I would need to slightly adjust my formula further to be able to achieve that. But because this was the introductory bit of VLOOKUP, I'm going to want to leave it at that. So that what we are able to achieve this far is we are able to only get the first item that meets the criteria of the search word, but at least we are not limited to having to type the full movie name. So if the person came to the movie store and only remembers the word Lord of the Rings, they don't need to remember the whole words. They can just say, come here and say, the only thing I remember is the word Lord of, sorry, Lord of the, Lord of the Rings. When I press enter, we have four entries that now meet that word, which means we actually have four versions of Lord of the Rings. But the first one that Excel found in our data has a rank of 126. Uh, the first one is in row 14, rank is 126. Now we, we will schedule another webinar to be able to now take you through how to be able to see the list of all the four. That needs a little bit of more practice, but we'll do that in a subsequent webinar we'll arrange for at a good time we'll communicate to you guys. So that is how you are able to do what we call fuzzy searches, a search that is not complete, a search that is, you only remember some specific bit. The only thing is you must write only the words you are sure with, okay? You must only write the words you are sure with. For instance, I cannot come and write here, Lord of the, instead of writing rings, then I'll, I write Lord of the Rind. I replace the, the G with a D like that. Excel will now tell me, uh-uh, you cannot come type. So you only type the part you are sure of. If I wasn't sure if it was ring or rind, then I would rather leave the word R-I. So because I wasn't sure whether it's a G or a D, I will remove the N. Then at that point, Excel will now get me an answer. Because you, so you, only, you only make the search to only look for the part in which you are, you are sure of the wordings you intend to use. Up to that point, were we able to achieve that? Question, yes, Paul, proceed to ask your question. Paul has a question. Please but, unmute. I'm yeah, saying I was agreeing. Oh, yeah, yes, saying I, I was agreeing to having the same answer as you did. And I was doing three just as you are working on. Oh, okay. So I, I just reading through the question you've written here, assuming you are at the movie shop owner, you are the movie shop owner and you don't want movie attendant to delete some names. 
how do you lock your table? There is uh, something on data validation and uh, security protection on Excel. Again, that is not part of the lessons we are learning today, but just to quickly tell you, you, the answer you're looking for is in the review tab. Something in the review tab, just note that and uh, we will drop our numbers. You can give us a call at some point later in the webinar and I'll be able to take you through so that we do not, uh, you do not uh, move away from the topic we are covering today as time is of essence. Understood? Thank you, sir. So I'm going to proceed. Now, I've left for you the journal. The journal, the main actor, the year, the sales, I've not filled them with data. I'm going to let you to do that at your spare time. But in case you get stuck at any point, I think there's a sheet I have somewhere in which that I've done it already there. No, not this one. But I have a, uh, you, you can be able to try and fill out the rest of the sheets at your spare time and see if you're able to pick out the figures correctly. Follow the guidance in the rank cell and see if you can get there. I want to introduce you to another use of VLOOKUP, which is to merge data. I want to introduce you to another use of VLOOKUP, which is to merge data. Please go to the very next sheet, which is VLOOKUP for merging data. Go to the next sheet, which is VLOOKUP for merging data. And quickly, let's see what we want to do here. Are we there? Now, in this data set here, I have two data sets that I want to bring in together, but their data are sitting separately. Part of the data is in two separate tables. You can see the first data running from column A to K. Then the second data running from which column number is this? Column P to V. And I want all the I want to fill up all these cells, the column in E to K, using data that is either here or in other sheets. How do we proceed with that? Very easy. VLOOKUP would be a very good friend to consider here. So what I want you to do is to, cons to first make sure that those two data sets have something that is unique to them. Do we have anything that is common in the data on column A to K versus the one that is on column P to V? Do we have anything that is common among those two? Anyone? Can you see anything that is common that we can use to do the matching? The staff number. The staff number. The staff number is in column A on this side and on column P on this side. So yes, we can use the staff number. But even as we use the staff number, I want you to be very keen that the staff number on one side has some character that is not on the staff number on the left side. The ones on column P have this constant DC. We notice that? While the staff numbers in column A are only plain numbers. That is okay. We can still be able to proceed with them as they are. So what we're going to do, we are going to tell Excel, now uh, in the last class we did, uh, no, in the, in, the, in the data management class we did, I taught you how to join text together. If for instance, you wanted a text to have some specific wordings joined to them, uh, we, we use the ampersand or a form function called concatenate. That is a trick we can be able to use here. So instead of having to separate or to split this column to remove away the DC part, we can actually write the VLOOKUP formula to force this word, have the DC, then proceed to do the check. How do we do that? I'm going to only do two, directorate and county. Then I will leave the rest for you. So I'm, I'm only going to do four. These two, directorate, county, then contribution date and contribution amount. Then the rest will, will do for you. You'll know why I'm picking those two. So let's start with the directorate. Let us start with directorate. Let's start with the directorate. Are we there? So put your cursor in the cell just below the word directorate. Put your cursor in the cell just below directorate. Say equals VLOOKUP. Equals VLOOKUP. Of course, at this point, you already know you need to double click on the word VLOOKUP or press tab, have an opening bracket. We are not repeating that, right? Click on the word, on the, on the, uh, the first staff number, which is 1001. Click on the first staff number, 1001. That is the lookup value. I want Excel to be looking for this 1001 in the other side of the table. Then if it finds it, it will bring us the directorate, which is somewhere in column T, all right? So our, the lookup value will be the 1001 that is in column A. So click on 1001, comma. The lookup table, the lookup table or the table array is column P to column V. Notice that I made sure 
the 1001 or the column that has the staff number stays in the very first column of the table I'm selecting. That is very important for VLOOKUP to work. All right? Put a comma. Somebody help me know the column index number. Somebody help me with the column index number. What shall I put for the column index number? What shall we put for the column index number? Anyone? Five. Josphat has said we type in five. Can somebody by voice explain to us why we're putting five to just see if we are getting? By voice, anybody who wants to try and explain why five? Hi. Um, yes, please. Jason, uh, this is yes, Gideon, I think. The yes. reason is because we are, we are calculating from column P. Um, so from, from column P, the electorate is at column number five. Yes. We That's what we are looking for, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. We start counting from where we selected our table from. So we, column P becomes our first column. Do not be mistaken to start counting from A. So then directorate becomes column five. Is it a coincidence all the ones we've done were column five? Anyway, so put a five, you type the five. Do not type T. Do not come and click on directorate. Type the column number. Put a last comma and say exact match. Double click on exact match. Double click on exact match. And when you press enter, while you expect to be happy, you will not be happy. Why? Because the match, the item you're searching for is not no. found as it is. Because while column A, the staff number is 1001, yeah. column P, if 1001 was there, it's DC 1001. So how do we adjust so that Excel can actually search for this item we are looking for? How do we adjust so that Excel can look for this item we're looking for? But I know somebody will tell me, but you said a hash NA simply means it wasn't found. So it could be that some other place it is found. So what I'll proceed to do, with your cursor on the NA, double click uh, on this bottom right corner, you know, the, the bolded dot that is in the bottom right corner, double click so that the result can run down and see if there's anywhere we find a, an answer. And you see all through, we do not have an answer. It is because the staff number on column A do not have the component of BC, while the staff number in column P have that component. So then, and to the good question you're probably asking, how do I adjust so that the staff number is able to still search for this staff number the way it is? The small trick is in forcing in the word DC in the search value forcing in the word DC, because I've noticed this side, there's already DC. But remember, I already mentioned that the other alternative was to separate this column P and have the DC on one column and the 1003 on another column, which if you remember from the previous class, you can use either flash fill or text to column, but we are not going to go into that today. So what I'm going to do is go back to the very first answer you have, then the first NA in, uh, in, the, in row two, Go to the first NA in row two, put your cursor just after the, uh, just after the word VLOOKUP, there's an opening bracket, put your cursor after that opening bracket. Put your cursor after that opening bracket. Notice that DC is towards the left of the, of the staff number, right? So we are going to put our cursor. Remember this A2 is the one that contains the staff number. So we are going to force in the word DC we are going to force in the word DC in there, then put the ampersand. Remember the ampersand is used to merge text. So we want to merge the word DC to whichever number is found in, column, uh, in the column A. But because this DC is a constant, we are going to do the thing we've done to all constants today, put it in double quotes. So put a double quote on the right side and on the left side of the DC. So the only adjustment we've made to our formula is we've told Excel, we want you to be looking up for DC and A2, whereby Excel will be joining the word DC and A2 to become one word and then proceed with the search. When you press and enter, all of a sudden we now have an answer. Then when you click on the, the answer we've gotten and double click to run it down, we have answers all through. Of course, with several NAs. Of course, with several NAs. So the few NAs that we are able to find in here, those would now mean that the specific items were not found in this table. And that is expected because when you closely look at it, while this column has how many entries? 
56 items. I'm looking at the summary statistics. While this column has 56 entries, this column only has 39, which means this misses about 30 or so. So then we, we should expect a couple NAs. Now, instead of having the NAs here, would it not be okay if we let say we told Excel instead of the NAs, you know, give us something like um, what? Actually, we can skip that bit considering we already did it. We can just skip. Let's just leave the NAs to be there. Just leave the NAs to be there. But what I want you to do is kindly write for me another formula in column F. Write for me another formula in column F that is going, write for me a formula in column F that is going to pull the countries from this table, the county rather, from this table and bring them this other side. I'm going to proceed to write my formula without speaking to you, as I hope you also try to write yours as I hope you also try to rise yours. So we have a minute to proceed and finish that. Are you done? I'm done, are you done? Somebody is happy with the result, I can tell. We look up it. Somebody is happy with the results, I can tell. If you're done, please type for me a yes in the chat box. Kindly drop me a yes in the chat box if you're done. I can see Gidinji is done. And two more yeses to proceed. Second yes comes in from Michael. The third yes. Do we have the ladies? Any yes for, ah, Janet is done. That three yeses and the fourth one, good. That means we were able to proceed. So for ethnicity, engagement terms and net salary, same process. You're going to pull them from here. I want to now jump and go to column J, which is a small little shift, same process, but a very small little shift. Now the contribution amount. So this organization here, it has the staff numbers contributing to, you know, let's say a circle or, you know, uh, you know, a, a pool kind of thing. So people contribute towards this uh, channel and people contribute through the bank. Whenever you contribute to the bank, you are needed to list your staff number. And the, the bank often sends us a statement, what accountants and finance people would call bank reconciliation. So the bank often sends us the bank statement summary, which I have in the very next sheet. You can confirm, you can find the bank statement summary. So what I want you to do is I want you to tell Excel to come to this sheet, check for the staff number that paid, pick the amount that they paid and have it posted in the contribution amount. And if the, the person did not pay, have the figure put at zero. Have the figure put at zero. Thank you for everybody writing a yes for having done the bit we are done with. That is what I want us to do with this second bit. Uh, and our time is fast running out, so I need to slightly adjust my speed. So I'm going to put my cursor just after the contribution amount. Put your cursor there. Put your cursor just after contribution, the word contribution amount. Yeah. Now, VLOOKUP can work not only within the same sheet, across multiple sheets, and even across multiple workbooks. You can write, actually write a VLOOKUP that moves from this workbook, goes to another Excel file somewhere and be able to pull the results and bring them back. That is how awesome VLOOKUP is, as is, as is any other formula that we have on, on, on Excel really. So let's proceed and say equals VLOOKUP, equals VLOOKUP. Our lookup value is the staff number, cell A2, comma this time our table array is not here notice that in this table here we have nothing close to contribution amount we have nothing close to contribution amount contribution amounts are actually in another sheet called bank statement summary so you are going to click in bank statement summary the moment you click on another sheet within a function excel will record the name of that sheet do not be cheated to delete that name if you delete the name, your formula does a whole different sort of thing. And that is something we'll be able to explain in our formula audit webinar that will be upcoming in the next field. So you do not delete the name of the sheet given there because that is what 
is able to direct Excel to the relevant sheets that you're working with. So having come to this sheet, I will come and highlight say columns A, B, and C like that. Again, same, same old, column A or the first column selected must contain the items we are searching for. Never forget that. So put a comma after selecting all of that. Then uh, we, we were interested in the contribution amount. Contribution amount in these three columns, what should be the, what should I write? I should write three, which is basically the amounts column, right? I should write a three, put a comma, and then choose on exact. Put a comma and choose on exact. Then at that point, we can press enter. Then at that point, we can press enter. At that point, we can press enter. Uh -huh. Now I can see we have a note applicable for this first person, but as we said, you can always double click to just check down and we can see that we have a couple items that have entries, which means the first not applicable was because this staff number 1001 was not found. Now, before you ask me, the reason why the lookup value here, you have not found the DC part is because I already checked and the staff number is written in the same format in the bank statement and in this other side. So we do not need to do the DC part the same way we were doing with the table that sits to the right. So just get that clearly. We, our, your data will always be coming in different formats and it's important that you are able to deal with your data in whichever format it comes with. That is why I'm trying to expose you to all the different techniques to run around with it, right? Now, can somebody quickly adjust their formula so that instead of the NA, it will make more sense if probably the Excel tells us, instead of NA, Excel tells us, um, zero. This person paid zero because it's a bank statement. If you paid zero, it simply means you didn't pay nothing, right? So I'm going to go to the very first statement there, uh, the first VLOOKUP formula and do the if error that we did. So I'm going to type if. Now I said if error and if NA does the same thing. So this time allow me to use if NA. So I'll just type if NA, then go to the very last part of that formula after the red, close after the red bracket, put a comma, and type zero, then close my bracket. That will eventually change all the values that I have. If it's supposed to be an NA, Excel will give me a zero instead. If it's supposed to be an NA, Excel will give me a zero instead. Excel will give me a zero instead. Were we able to achieve that? Were we able to achieve that? I'm in the chat box. Two yeses. Yes, one from Gidinji and another one from Michael. Good. Gidinji and Michael have been good students today as to Robert Kandie. So we're going to proceed. Now, uh, allow me to teach you a quick trick. Allow me to teach you a quick trick to interact with formulas. If we wanted to write the same formula again, and instead of dragging, I'm going to, I'm going to, to, to play with you not to drag the formula because when you drag the formula, then a whole different topic of cell referencing comes in and that we have not covered it is going to complicate our lives. If you want to copy a formula without the cell references moving, then what you do is you copy it from the formula bar. Okay? You copy it from the formula bar. When you do this, when you just copy this formula and then paste it here, all the references will move relative to the direction you copied it to. But when you want to copy the formula and have the same answer without changing any reference, you copy what is in the formula bar, like that. Control copy, control C. Then before you do anything, you press enter first. Because the moment you are in the formula bar, if you click anywhere, it will change the formula you're having. Then when you come and paste it in the whichever location, you will have the same result as you can see there. So if you double click, I'll be having the same column. All right, but now for this second column, I wanted the date and not the, the amount. So the only thing I will change is this three here. The only thing I will change is the column index number. And because I know that my dates were in the second column, I'll just come and change this three to two. I'll just come and change this three to two and press enter. Uh, when I double click, I will see all the dates have changed. But notice because we have brought this using formulas, Excel has formatted our results in numbers. Instead of formatting it in dates, it has formatted it in numbers. 
So as per our data management class that we did uh, a long time ago, we will come to the home group, to the home tab rather, in the number group, then click on this general and change it to short date. Click on this general and change it to short date. Click on the general and change it to short date. Now notice that all the cases where we had a zero, they have been changed to the first date of 1900. So I want to tell Excel that if my if a result is not found, instead of typing zero, instead of typing zero, give me a dash. Give me a dash. So what I'm going to do is I will put that dash in the two double quotes like that, so that instead of typing a zero, it gives me a dash like that. That would make more sense than having 1900 as a date when we know it simply means a zero. Uh, has anyone been able to achieve that small bit? So basically, uh, instead of writing the formula fresh here, I copied the formula we had, pasted it here, then slightly adjusted what we wanted to be able to get this. Now, that is what we usually do in what we call bank reconciliations. That is what we usually do in bank reconciliations. Basically, you're trying to match or bring together an understanding between two different sets of data to be able to get uh, an updated schedule, uh, so to say, of some data that you have. Were we able to achieve the column for contribution date? Are we able to achieve column for contribution dates? Anybody wants to confirm? I already can see a couple of yeses here. I already can see a couple of yeses here. So that is good. Now, I know that in the sheet for VLOOKUP for merging data, I've slightly moved fast. I totally understand. I have moved fast. But because I already anticipated this when we started, I created a, a, a separate sheet, merging data. You can see the other green light, green sheet called merging data. I have filled all the data, I have filled all the columns with the relevant data. So the only thing you will need to do is find the time and go check. So try doing it. If you can't find it, go to that sheet and you'll be able to see the result. So I've already filled everything in the sheet called merging data, merging data matched. So in case you're not able to figure it out, go through that sheet, you'll be able to see what I was able to do there. Then the last thing, the last thing I want you to do uh, in the next, uh, four minutes so that we have 10 minutes for question and answer in the next four minutes i want us to, i want to introduce you to another type of vlookup which now uses the matching style we have not talked about all this while i've been telling you to click on exact match exact match somebody must have be asking then when is approximate match used when is approximate match used in vlookup yes approximate match also has its work which I'm going to introduce in the next five minutes, then we shall break and have the last 10 minutes to five for question answer and other in housekeeping stuff. Now, whenever you use exact match, you are simply telling Excel, if you do not find the item I was looking for, if you do not find the item I was looking for, then please tell me I didn't find it. Don't give me any other answer. But when you use approximate matching, when you use approximate matching, you are simply telling Excel that should you not find the item I'm interested in, then bring me the item that is closest to it. Now, approximate matching only works for searches of numbers. You cannot do an approximate match on names. The only closest thing you can do on names is the fuzzy matching we did back there, where you put the, in double quotes, the star, and then the word you want to look for. But for numbers, you can do approximate matching. And what Excel does is, it will give you the largest number that is smaller than the lookup value. The largest number, uh, let me just perhaps type it somewhere here. The largest number, uh, the largest value, uh, smaller than the lookup value. That is what Excel does whenever you do approximate matching. But don't worry about it. Sounds like Greek. Okay, no worries. I will explain it in doing. So let, let me quickly try to engage you. Let me quickly try to engage you. If you were searching for 22, if a student of yours scored a 22, and as per this grade chart, what should this student get? As per this grade chart, what, what should this student get? An E, An right? E. Because, because uh, 22 is between 0 to 24. But notice that for VLOOKUP, we are going to need to segregate these uh, ranges so that I only pick the lower ranges. You see here, I only pick the lower ranges, which is 0, 25, 35, 50, and 70. So if we were using 
the approximate that I believe is in your mind, then 20, 22 should be closer to 25 than it is to zero, right? Normally in maths, 22 is closest to which number among the five highlighted here? 25. It's closest to 25, which means you'll be geared towards awarding these students a D. But notice you'll be awarding the wrong grade because 22 is between zero and 24, which is an E. So what Excel does is it will give the grade. Now, if our lookup value is 22, in this list, it will award the biggest number that is smaller than the lookup value. So among these items, which number is smallest is smaller than 22? It's only zero. That is why for 22, we will have a zero. But anyway, don't worry about it. When you're working with approximate matching, there's only one condition you need to meet. The lookup table must be arranged in ascending order. Not should be, not maybe, not can be. Must be arranged in ascending order. Otherwise, you will not get your results. That is the only thing VLOOKUP asks of you. So ensure you arrange this in ascending order. So then how we proceed to do this, and as you're going to see, this is very easy. Now, if, you, if, you're, uh, if you've worked with... Uh, uh, kindly mute your microphone. Kindly mute your microphone, sir. Thank you so much. If you have worked with the uh, conditional, uh, with the logical functions, you will notice that we can actually be able to award these grades by using if statements. But you can see how long an if statement gets in working this. VLOOKUP makes this work very easy. So how does it work though? Very easy. Put your cursor just below VLOOKUP. Put your cursor just below VLOOKUP. Type equals. Say VLOOKUP. Say VLOOKUP. What is our lookup value? The score that the student had. Have you clicked on the score? Put a comma. Put a comma. What is the table array? Where do you want to search? for these 22, because we cannot search in these ones because they are ranges, we want to search in the sheet that we just created here. We want to search in the sheet that we just created here. Just click on the entire of that area. You can click, you can click including the word score and grade, or you can just start from where zero and grade E is. All of them gives the same result, worry not. Comma, column index number. If we find this score, what do you want us to give you as an answer? We want you to give us the grade that is relevant. In this table, grade is in which column number? Grade is in column number? Anyone? Two. two. Column number two. Good. Put a comma. And lastly, for this case, if you type exact match, you will not have an answer. Why? 22 is not in this table. 23 is not in this table. 21, 20, 19, 58 are not in this table. So we are going to say approximate match, having made sure that this is arranged in ascending order. But before you ever have the guts to click approximate matching, always remember this writing here. I've just dragged it to put it closer to what I was writing. Approximate match, the values in the first column of your table array, not cooled, not can, not may must be sorted in ascending order. My good friends, if you go and click on approximate matching and you press enter, you shall be happy that Excel did not give you a D the, because 22 is close to 25, but it actually gave you an E, which when you proceed to drag all the way down, you shall make sure that all the students that are here have been graded correctly based on the grade chart that we have here. But because I know something in your mind is, ask, is making you think, but what would happen if I just arrange this data not in ascending order? What will Excel do? What's the worst that it can do? The worst that it can do is this. I have ordered this data in descending order. Intentionally to just make sure that you are able to see it's a, it's a condition. I'm going to drag it and put it just above where we had arranged in ascending order, then see what is going to happen to our VLOOKUP column G. When I leave it there and allow the replacement of data, see what happens in the answers we have automatically they break because this is now not arranged in ascending order. So I'm going to undo and remind you that whenever you use approximate matching, always make sure that the first column of the table array is arranged by default 
in ascending order. At 10.52, I ask to finish the presentation and welcome questions, answers, uh, and the last remaining uh, in-house sessions as we finish. Thank you so much for listening. It's been a total pleasure being of service to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jishan. Uh, that was quite awesome. Uh, does anyone have a question regarding what Jishan has covered? Um, yes, yes, I do. Okay, please proceed. Um, um, Jishan, um, yes, giving you here again. So, I was wondering when when you when you're dragging the formula down the VLOOKUP, mm -hmm. um, and then you got all the grades there. Mm -hmm. How come the the knee is not? What do you call it? The table is not tighter empty chinese or references. Ah. Because we, we didn't select from the, the top <laughs> okay, there. Okay, okay, okay. Good yeah. question. I, I actually intentionally decided not to speak about it because my time was running out. But now that you've mentioned it, allow me to just uh, respond. Uh, I want to take you back to something. Click on anything uh, in column G, any of the responses, any of the grades that we have. Notice that after D4, or okay, in, in that section for table array, Notice that there is a name. Instead of M something to N something, we, which we would have expected, it's written VL score chart. Do you notice that? Yes. You notice that? So what I did yes. is I named this range, I named this range VL score chart. So when you click on it, you will see the name. Just follow my red toggle uh, pointer. You see VL score chart in the back here. So yeah. I named this range VL score chart. When you do cell naming, then you do not need to do cell referencing. The dollar signs that which is what you're talking about. When you do cell yeah. naming, you actually help yourself not having to do cell naming. So just to watch what's going to happen here. Yeah? I want to just come to any cell here and say equals uh, VL score chart. When I double click on this item, you are going to see this area highlighted. So one, two, let's go. You see what happens? because I named the range. So when you name ranges in formula, when you're working with formulas, you don't need now to worry about having to do cell references. And the reason for which I named the ranges before we started is because I knew I, didn't, I couldn't have wanted to select these two areas when there's some other data here, but also I didn't want to be dragged into having to do cell referencing, which was not something I was covering. And I know some people are probably not good at it. That's why I did that to avoid that route uh, intentionally. I hope that shed some light. Yeah, yeah. It, it, so maybe it, uh, the question you ask, you could be asking is how then do, did I name it? How do you name a range? Very easy. I want to, let's say, name this side. So I want to select this area. And let's say we want to call it uh, Gidinji. I'll just highlight it. Then you see now currently it's written J5, which is the first cell of the selected area. I will click here. This is called the name box. I will click here and then just type the name Gidinji the ng then press enter when i click outside and come back and highlight the same area excel will tell me that oh oops this place going forward we named it Gidinji. so that when i also come here and say do you know Gidinji? you see now Gidinji is a, a named range when i double click on it excel highlights the area so i can even use it in formulas now i hope that helps you sir yeah it does because i think uh, i was i was i thought you had you know uh, no 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 okay. that was, named that Named yes, the table, but then yes. I couldn't find a table there. So no, 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 it's not the table. I'd named the range, but I think uh, if you go to our YouTube channel, which uh, uh, one I believe one of my colleagues posted in the chat box, you can be able to see the 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 recording on that term management. I think we need a little bit on naming, so you, that could be beneficial to you, sir. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Nation. I keep calling you Nation. I don't know why. Uh, Nation? You're doing a proxy match to Jason. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, it, please proceed. It, it's a beautiful thing, and uh, I've actually learned a little uh, something new to say. And I only have one question. When it comes to the, the naming, uh, most recent Gidinj, can I actually draw? Uh, Gidinji into a new sheet, like say you type Gidinji in a new sheet that is within the workbook or not, and I get the the cells that actually are represented by the name Gidinji. Is that possible? Uh, 
yes, to answer to you, in the same workbook, in the same workbook, the name Gidinji would apply whenever you call it. Okay, so even uh, let's say considering now we have the VL score chart. If I were in another sheet back here, I've gone to the bank statement sheet. If I were writing my VLOOKUP, I would say equals VLOOKUP. Uh, actually, let me just write VL score chart. You can see the name is still found while on another sheet. Even the Gidinji that we just wrote a minute ago, we can still find it from this side. As long as you are in the same workbook the name applies across all worksheets, which is to mean again that you cannot name another cell or another group of cells within you again. You cannot have the same name apply to more than one item, but you can have one cell with more than one name. The only thing you can't do is have one name used more than once in the same workbook, not worksheet, workbook. Workbook being the whole Excel file, like what we sent you a workbook, in the whole workbook, a name given in a specific sheet, works across all the sheets in that workbook. Answers to you, Nashon? No. Hello? No, no, it, it doesn't answer. Uh, what was the question specifically? This is, this is the question, if I may try to actually explain it uh, any, any simpler. Uh -huh. You see the, what did we call it? Uh -huh. What was The name we call Gidenji or VL Scotchard? VL Scotchard, right? Yes, so yes. A new sheet, a new worksheet. A new worksheet, uh -huh. which means it's still in this work, still in this workbook. Yes. Uh -huh. so you, you, you type in Is it possible mm. that uh, upon typing it all, regardless mm. of what I just said, can mm. I just carry this VL Scotchard into another worksheet? without having to redo all copy and paste and shift transfer it to the other worksheet. Yes, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Uh, let, let me just help you real quick with a very rubric uh, example, yeah? I want you to, or and for everyone who is interested, uh, perhaps, I want you to click on any cell uh, like I have, and uh, because Nation is talking, I just want to write here Nation. I just want to write in this cell Nation, right? But in this cell, I want to give it a name, then try call this name from a different sheet. Notice that we are going to name this cell while on the VLOOKUPs in classification sheets. So I'm going to go up in the number and call this sheet uh, name. Call this sheet name, then press enter, right? So that when I'm on this sheet, I'm told, remember this sheet is called name. So if I went anywhere on this sheet and say it equals name, when I press enter, I should get the word national because that is the word that is contained in the cell called name. If I went to any other sheet, even a new sheet for that instance, if I go in and click equals name, I should be able to get the word nation. If I went back to the bank statement summary where the, the word nation was not there, if I said equal name, press enter, should be nation. As is in any other sheet, I will decide, even the very first sheet we started today's class with, equals name should get us nation. Does that probably work now? So the answer to the question you're asking is yes. Yes, it does. It does, thank you so much.